Hi, this video is about producing your own or, or customizing your own user toolbars for 12D. I'm hoping you're finding this YouTube video from our 12D wiki page. Further down the file after the notes, um, you'll actually see you can actually download an example zip file. So if you can just download that, save it away, maybe to your C drive or to your desktop. And we're going to use that as an example and I can just show you and, and talk you through how to produce your own toolbars. So if you've downloaded the file, put it on your desktop or something, I might actually just put it into this testing area that I've got on my D drive. Um, I'm just going to essentially extract the data from there. So extract all and to this directory itself. So it'll make a new directory for you and put a whole bunch of files in there. So this example toolbar directory that it's unzipped to, will have an, another couple of bits of information inside it, toolbar setups and a number of example files to get you going. So some of these files, we actually want to move from the location where you've unzipped the data to your C drive. So I'll just open up another a second user, or sorry, another explorer to my user directory. Because I'm using version 14, you can see C, 12D, the version number, and I've got my user directory there. Mine's quite blank at the moment, but the files I really need to take are the user, the toolbars directory, and this images also. So I'm gonna copy those or, or cut those from there and place those under C drive, the standard default directory where 12D would be looking for the for this, the user directory there. So I'll paste those in there. Excellent. The other files and, and the file, the zip file was quite large because it actually had a bunch of extra icons that you could use um, if you're looking for extra images and things for your actual toolbars. I've just provided a whole bunch of standard ones. You could probably download some other bitmap files from the internet also to try and come up with some good images. But to get 12D started, you definitely need it to be in this directory. When 12D starts, it's going to look for this user toolbars.4D file, and it will then create the example ones that I provided to you, which we're gonna go and now have a look at how you can customize those further. So just gonna fire up a 12D, a version of 12D, just a testing job, and we can have a look what we've got there. So inside 12D, if you've just started the project, these are the example toolbars that have been generated. You possibly will need to turn them on because they wouldn't have been there before. So again, under view toolbars, these are the list of all the toolbars that come with 12D. There's a number of them in alphabetical order. And obviously, because it's got the XXX, they're going to be right down the bottom of the list there. So that's how it's reading it. Um, and you can see essentially what we've got is there's a button, the name of the actual button itself. Um, underneath the button, there'll be a command to fire up that button. Um, and there's also then the image as well that 12D is loading there. And that was under that images directory. So going back to Explorer, if we had a look at what we put under the user, we got this toolbars.4D file. We've got a directory there and I'll explain to you that what I'm gonna use that for in a couple of minutes. And there's the images directory. They're the images that are actually showing up on the toolbars themselves. And you can control that way what the, what the bitmaps actually look like. So let's get into the actual toolbars and see how 12D is actually making these. Now I've just rearranged 12D off to the side here so I can still get access to Explorer and to some other files that I want to show you as well. But essentially what happens when you start up a 12D project, um, 12D obviously loaded under your program files will go along and under the version again under setups it goes and looks at these standard .4D files. And the one we're really interested in is the toolbars.4D file. So this is the standard toolbars.4D file that 12D ships. Um, and is installed on your PC. Um, and that's what's giving you all the toolbars down the side inside 12D and obviously allows you to create your own also. So we don't recommend anyone really touch the toolbars.4D file, although it is a really good starting point and also gives you some code as well to have a look at if you were interested in some of the images of some of the toolbars that are already shipped and you might want to use some of those images also or the name of those images. So we've got the toolbars.4D file, right at the top of the setups directory also is this images directory. And that's the one again that contains a whole bunch of bitmaps. There's lots of bitmap files in here and all the different icons that are used provided and, and come up on the toolbars as well. So that's how 12D starts. So what happens if we have a look at what happens with this 12D, the toolbars.4D file, it has this silent include. So essentially at the very top of the 12D file, it wants to include a user toolbars.4D file. And that's the one that we just put onto the C drive under the user directory. So 12D is going to add your user toolbars to the standard 12D list. And so these are the user ones here. 
the user toolbar that I, I gave you under your, your C drive and you've just copied it across from the zip file, you can see here it's actually quite simple. Um, it's got a couple of different options in here, um, some preferred methods of how to, how to work, but essentially it again has this silent include. So what we're doing essentially, we've got the toolbars that comes from 12D, we'll read in the user toolbars and you could actually have all your commands in this one user toolbars file, but to keep things nice and neat and, and housekeeping, um, we sort of recommend that you do possibly provide um, toolbar file, a different text file for each toolbar that has actually generated itself. So you can just keep the housekeeping a little bit, bit neater that way. So you can see here, what we've got 12D again with the toolbars, it's reading the user toolbars directory, which is this file. Um, and this file is actually being redirected to automatically call in the one out of the toolbars directory. And in the toolbars directory, we have the text file, which is our toolbar that I'm gonna have a look at in a minute. And we've got a couple of other things here. It's an example of a chain of a macro and a, of a SLX file or screen layout file also, just as an example to show you how, that, how it works. So let's drill down onto the actual toolbar itself, this example one. And you can see at the top here, at the very top of the line is the name of the toolbar, XXX example. Um, and then you can see the button itself. So the button name, and that's what comes up when you hover over it, is the name of the button. Now the command itself, and there are a bunch of different commands that 12D provide. One, this one here is just a standard 12D command. So that will just fire up the standard panel. It's like going to the main menu and firing up the normal panel from 12D. Another type of command is actually to use one of these layouts or the, the SLX, the screen layout files. Again, um, you can see we've pathed this one to look in the user directory under the toolbars and actually look for the SLX file. And the last line of code in all of these is the actual icon itself, which is the bitmap file that 12D is looking for. So if we go back and have a look, so we've, again, we sort of recommend that if we put all our toolbar information in a directory called toolbars, we've got our text file in there, and then we've got all our chains or our SLX files or macros in here, and everything we need to call up via the, for our toolbars, for our user toolbars are living in a directory a place together all in one spot. So it makes it nice and neat that way. So there's an example of a, a screen layout file of a chain running a macro. So there's the command to running a macro or a chain plotting. And if we go down a little bit further here, you'll actually see that this one here has three lines of code. So actually there's, there's a macro one there to read it from the user directory or the one if the macro happens to be read from 12D's library as well. And that's another way we can code to, to pull up macros. Coming back down here, the fly out button, actually here, you can see here we've got the one that actually flies out or flies down to produce our, our second toolbar, long section plotting, cross section and stormwater. So with these ones, again, we've got the button, the command and the icon. And then we've got a fourth line of code, which is actually the fly out, which becomes the name of our toolbar. So again, we just sort of space our ones out. So we've got here a couple of extra buttons after the fly out. So we've got an explorer icon and we've also got a save one here, or sorry, a help button at the end there. Help me. There's the last button. But the fly out here is then called up via another toolbar here. And those then can have extra options underneath there. So each fly out, you can again, contain them all in one file, but it just, just depends how you want to structure your actual toolbars themselves. So with each one, you need a button, a command and the icon. Now the icons themselves, well, you can use the standard 12D icons, which is, is, as I showed you before, under the setups, and that's where these bitmap files are. Or you can actually create your own icons, your own bitmap files, and place those. And 12D will just go looking for the icon locations. So you can see under the user again, that was the images that we placed in here. And so 12D is finding that image. It's not shipped with 12D, but I've got my own icon, the little help button there, and that's what's then coming up on the icon for the button itself there. So you can add your own ones in. If they're not standard 12D icons, you just need to put them in this images directory and they'll then be called in automatically into the toolbar.
to be honest, the hardest thing with actually making these toolbars is usually picking an icon or something that looks good. So you might actually prefer, and some users do, actually going into the world of actually making a user menu. I've got another video that will go through how to actually produce your own user menus. They work, the commands and, and the text file format is exactly the same as the toolbars. So you can actually put them in both if you wish to. Well, I've hoped this helps and gets you started in making your own toolbars within 12D. Thanks very much.